Change could be on the horizon for the unchanging Board of Supervisors. On June 8th, every registered voter in the County of San Diego can decide whether the county supervisors should be limited to eight years on the board. If term limits passes, it could redefine a governing body that likes to stay out of the limelight. Next week, the KPBS Envision special will focus on the County Board of Supervisors. KPBS reporter Joanne Farian produced Who's Supervisor? San Diego. So, Joanne, why is this a topic that you wanted to cover in the Envision series? Well, really uh, a couple of reasons, Gloria. As you mentioned in your introduction, this is a, a layer of government that is not often scrutinized. In fact, they, they're not, they don't really receive a lot of media coverage. Also, we went in with the assumption that we don't think a lot of people in this county really understand that layer of government or understand really what a supervisor does. So what is their role? Well, they control a $5 billion budget, and that $5 billion pays for various social services programs. We hear a lot about food stamps. It pays for public assist assistance. When we had the H1N1 outbreak, it's the county's job to intervene and, and assess the, the, the risk. Um, they, they inspect restaurants. They, um, they actually uh, make a lot of decisions that affect your daily life. Uh, $5 billion, uh, about 80% of that budget is tied up in state and federal mandates. In other words, these are state programs and federal programs that the county has to administer. And then there's a 20% to $1 billion that the board can actually establish its priorities with. So that's where their power is. Why should people care what the Board of Supervisors does? It's your money. That billion dollars, most of that comes from your local property taxes. So you ought to know how they spend that billion dollars. You ought to know what their priorities are. Well, then what are their priorities? Uh, well, I asked them, and um, here they describe their priorities in their own words. Uh, my priorities are still public safety. The public safety is our number one priority. Public safety is the highest priority. Public safety. My number one priority has always been public safety. So if public safety is the priority for the current board, what does that mean for the other services that the county is supposed to provide? Well, I think that the thing that was a little bit surprising, first of all, and you just saw all five supervisors. You saw Greg Cox, Pam Slater-Price, Ron Roberts, Bill Horn, and Diane Jacob. And they all established public safety for all of them as their number one concern. So I think, first of all, the public ought to know that. You've got a board who shares a similar um, um, priority, really, in terms of what they think is important for this county. There are a number of, of other things that pri the county County is responsible for. We talked about social services. Uh, we looked at looking at this billion dollar pie. How does the board divvy up its resources? How much money goes to public safety? Turns out it's more than half of that pie. How much money goes towards health and human services? Turns out it's seven percent of that pie. And in fact, that seven percent is decreasing. But why is this all meaningful to the county residents that so much of the priority goes to public safety? Well, when you hear stories about um, San Diego County has the worst food stamp record, in other words, we're in the middle of a recession and fewer people are getting resources, and you, you ought to, we want to know why. Why is that? If you, you hear stories that we also investigate a lot of public assistance fraud, why is that? And what we uh, really traced it back to, the, the board has a philosophy. They have a an approach to government um, and and it's important to know when you're voting who you're voting for. You check this out with one of our San Diego City Councilmen. Absolutely. So we spoke with Todd Gloria and the reason we spoke with him is because he worked for the state legislature, he worked for the county and now he's an elected representative. He sits on the the city council um, and, and we asked him about um, sort of this lack of media scrutiny, uh, the composition of the board and here's what he had to say. I think that when people look at the current composition of the Board of Supervisors, they are surprised at the very homogeneous nature of the board, uh, where you have uh, uh, all Republicans, uh, all San Diego State grads, uh, uh, and uh, all, uh, all Caucasian. Um, and then you look perhaps at the San Diego City Council, where we're far more diverse. You know, we have three women, uh, three people of color, uh, two gay men, uh, six Democrats, two Republicans, um, and it's more heterogeneous and I think therefore creates for a more uh, uh, healthy dialogue in terms of points of view, perspectives, life experiences uh, that are all brought to the table when decisions are being made. 
You know, the media has taken a look at the supervisors lately. It's looked at their discretionary fund, and there's been some criticism. Yes, the critics have called that the slush fund. And what that is, it's $2 million per supervisor. And that supervisor gets to um, hand that money, money out in grants to various uh, community organizations. It is subject to final board approval. Uh, because of this scrutiny, because critics have said, wait a minute, this it's not so much where the money goes, but it's the process that it's a supervisor deciding whether or not your cause is worthy. They've been under fire for that. As a result, the board has voted to reduce that discretionary fund from $2 million to $1 million next fiscal year. However, I should let you know, we looked at budget documents. Uh, according to that operational plan, the uh, discretionary fund returns to $2 million after next fiscal year. Okay, so I'm looking forward to it. When does who's supervising San Diego air? June 2nd, that's Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And also you can find a lot of information um, on our website, kpbs.org slash supervisors. You can learn more about that discretionary fund and how we compare to other supervisors across the state as well. Joanne Farian, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.